and welcome to the Happy Morning Show live on ETV Live on Happy 98.9 FM. As we indicated yesterday on the morning show, we told you that we're going to try and bring clarity to the conversation about the EC and the minority in Parliament and the concerns that are being raised about the new voters uh, register which the minority alleges that the EC wants to compile as much as the EC has sought to set clarity on the matter. There's still some issues lingering in the minds of Ghanaians and so this morning we happen to be in the offices of the EC and we are the Deputy EC Chair, Dr. Bosman Asari, to have a conversation about the uh, you know, continuous registration exercise that they intend to embark on and the new CI which is in Parliament so that we can understand what it is that the EC intends to do. So that's the focus of the conversation live on the Happy Morning Show. And so folks, you're welcome to the office of Dr. Bosman Asar. Doc, good morning. Good morning. And how are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I hope you are well too. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. But for entering into your office, I would never have known that you are an elder. <laughs> I, I just took notice of the fact that you are an elder of a church. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, so, how does it feel being an elder and an EC chairperson and every time you're on the news and the lambasting is going on? How does it feel? Well, I think uh, we, uh, some of us have taken up a profession which requires that uh, you play a particular sensitive role in our body politic. And looking at the nature of our political parties and uh, the inventives and the and the insults that characterize our politics, one should expect that this is normal. But I always tell myself that just make sure you are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Make sure that everything you are doing as an institution is on the right track. And once you are doing that, those who may even accuse you, they will look back and, and tell themselves that, oh, we thought the people did the right thing. And even beyond that, the parties themselves, they know. And I, I, I do think that the leadership of the parties, they know that the EC can never undertake any action or engage in any exercise that will undermine the fortunes of one party against uh, the other. So I think that I'm, I'm very much okay. And people do ask me, are you okay? And I say, ah, there is nothing wrong because we know we are on the right side. We know what we are doing is only promoting integrity in the process. If you, you remember, in 2020, we took the decision that a new register must be uh, compiled. Uh, many people said no, and, and a number of significant voices said no, but I know all of them, when they look back, they realize that the EC did the right thing. And looking at the voter turnout and how the processes transpired, uh, people went through the biometric uh, facial verification process, and everything was excellent to the extent that the European Union, for the first time, gave us 95% approval for the work which was done in 2020. So I think that uh, people will people will always put us in the back, although they may not express it publicly. It's interesting the rhetoric in the media space when it comes to the minority, the major, you know, minority political party. That's the opposition political party, the NDC. The rhetoric always is that Bosman, Jean, and the rest of them are all in the pocket of the NPP. How do you feel when you hear that? No, I think I think they know it's not true. I know, uh, you know, the, the thing about the pol politics is that you want to give a dog a bad name mm. uh, so that once you are able you succeed at that, you get others to also uh, follow, follow suit. So I, I understand we're appointed by the MPP you government. Think, you think that they are trying to give you a bad name so as to hang you? No, basically that's, that's what it is. That's why I say give the dog a bad name and others who follow suit, you end up hanging the person. The reality is that we're appointed by the MPP. Uh, government. But if you want to say we are in the pocket of the MPP, just look at the work we are doing. And you, you've got to analyze it and say, this move being made by the Electoral Commission, how is it benefiting Party A and Party B? Mm. I remember in 2020 you heard that, oh, the registration was going to disenfranchise people in the stronghold of the NDC. Indeed. Based on the information after the registration, did, the, did we disenfranchise the people in the NDC strongholds? I, I remember the time one of the key allegations they were making was the fact that there was military persons there and then also the access to, you know, for instance, the vets and deaths registry in those parts of the country had become problematic for people in the area to, you know, register. And these were concerns that were almost everywhere. No, let, let's be very frank. When you say military persons, the Electoral Commission doesn't control the military. Mm. 
And I know based on the reports that came to us, the NDC itself admitted that their people were able to register. And you know, when you want to know people registered or not, you just need to look at the population dynamics of that particular region or that particular constituency. And nationwide, we had almost all the adult population. For the first time I, uh, in Ghana, we had almost about 55 percent of uh, Ghanaians on the voters' roll. Mm. And in West Africa, we had the highest in 2020. The only country that did better than Ghana was uh, Kivet. I know Kivet has a population of about uh, 500,000. So if we are comparing Kivet to Nigeria, to Ivory Coast, to Ghana, look at Niger Nigeria. Has, uh, the, those on the voters' roll, but the last time I checked, less than 45 percent. A number of the countries in West Africa are averaging around 45 percent, but we did up to 55 percent, very, very much consistent with the best practice around the world. In other words, we opened up to the extent that anyone who wanted to register, we finished the normal registration, we still opened up to allow anyone who wanted to register to do it. So clearly, the evidence on the ground points to a different conclusion. The EC can never do that. Interesting. Let's fast forward to today, because uh, we are here because of some uh, doubts in the minds of Ghanaians as to a CIA which the EC sent to Parliament and some, you know, controversy that's surrounding that CIA. Can you give us a sense of what's contained in that CIA that's generating all this controversy? What's well, in there? No, the, the CIA, you know, we... A we, draft. A draft. We have, we have what we call, we have CI 91, I think which was, uh, which passed the Parliament, I think, 20... Uh, 16. Then we have CI 126. The CI 126 is a, a, a amended some portions of 91. Mm -hmm. Then after 2020 elections, the commission met with its stakeholders, the media, uh, civil society, and our political parties at a hotel not far away from here. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of discussions about uh, moving forward as an institution and as a country. And one of the things that clearly came out was that the commission must pursue a continuous registration exercise so that we don't wait till, let's say, after one year, then we say there's a limited registration for a particular month. Then people will be scrambling, people will be queuing at our registration centers. So let's have this continuous registration so that any time somebody turns 18, the person will just go to our district office or the district office in that person's constituency to go and register. I know in Ghana, most of the districts are also constituencies. I think only about, I think about eight or so districts have two constituencies, like Cape Coast, I think Menshia, uh, Tekra, they, they, they have two constituencies. And then we have some in Accra here, as well as uh, Tema. So we said once people turn 18, they would just go to the office and register. Then the second issue that came out was that the Ghana card had made a lot of progress in terms of the registration of Ghanaians. Because in 2020, when we were about to do the rollout, the registration exercise, that time the Ghana had, card had done almost 7 million. But when you look at what they have done now, as of Friday last week, they had done 17 million 138 thousand. And this discussion was, uh, this uh, discussion came up that why don't we ensure that, okay, once people turn 18, let's allow them to go to our district office with the Ghana card. Then the discussion came, what about the guarantor system, which has become a regular feature of our elections or of our registration since, 20, since 1992? Then it came out that, you know, commission, we have, we have the people I call street-level bureaucrats, our officers on the ground in all the districts. In every district, we run an average of about five officials. We have the district officer, the deputy, the secretary, we have a driver, a nice security, an average of our five personnel, where we have the full complement. And for most of the districts, we do. And we do get reports from them. And you know, apart from that, we also engage temporary operatives. They did the registration in the 2020. We get feedback from them. And one of the things that came out was that, you no, know, Article 42 of our Constitution is very clear that any Ghanaian who attains the age of 18 has the right, it's a fundamental human right to register in the Ghanaian who attains the age of 80. But the Constitution doesn't talk about how do you identify a Ghanaian. You, Mr. Sean, may probably be a U.S. citizen, although your name is a Sean, which is a Ghanaian mm. name. Your colleagues may be Nigerians, etc. So the Constitution didn't give us any clue as to how to identify 
a Ghanaian. The constitution gives clues as to who qualifies to be a Ghanaian. Who qualifies to be a yes, Ghanaian? Gives you who qualifies to, to be, be a Ghanaian. Ghanaian. So that's stipulated in the constitution. But it doesn't tell you how do you identify uh, how do you identify the person? Yes, indeed. As a Ghanaian. Indeed. And apart from that, how do you identify if someone is 18 years? Mm. How do you establish it as a registration officer? Unless the person comes with an evidence, a document, a document to prove. Mm. And since 1992, we've been using this photo identification. Mm. So birth cert, for example, has never been used in our registration. We've never, so when you look at the previous CI, I think CI is this CI, we've never used the birth cert, CI 72 or so. We've never used the birth cert. So the commission said, if that is the case and we've made progress with the Ghana card together with our partners, why don't we demand that Anyone who wants to register as a voter, just bring the Ghana card. And we are also saying that for this continuous registration, we are only going to register those who did not register in 2020. Maybe the person was more than 18 years in 2020, but for some re one reason or the other, the person chose not to register. And since we finished the registration somewhere in August 2020, some people too have turned 18 years. So let's open up for them to also register. And again, we also said, if that is the case, the people should bring the Ghana card. Because we noticed that over the years, we've been having challenges with the guarantor. I mentioned that how you identify somebody who is 18. So you go to a number of our registration centers, and you see people who are clearly 13 years, who are clearly 14 years, 15 years. Then two other persons or another person will be fronting for them that, Oh, I know them, they are actually 18. And when their registrations are challenged for them to appear before a committee, a number of them will chicken out. Mm -hmm. Then you also have people who clearly are not Ghanaians, but others will be fronting for them. So in 2020, for example, we had about 52 foreigners whose uh, voters' cards were taken away from them. So clearly this is something which is, it's not something people, it's there. I remember, was it somewhere 2020, we even had an incident somewhere in the Afran Place area where a certain lady came to register. Any of the Ghanaian languages, she couldn't speak. She could only speak French. But somebody was vouching that, oh, this person is actually a Ghanaian who has been in the country for over eight years, but couldn't speak any Ghanaian language except French, which we know is not a Ghanaian. So clearly, these are problems. So what the Electoral Commission is saying is that if all of us, the media, civil society, the political parties, we embrace this, what it means is that the minors, the children who are, some of them are in class five, class six, people defending that they are actually 18 years because they are ignorant and people tell them, go and do it. All these things will reduce very, very significantly. And we are not saying that if people come to the registration center to register with the Ghana card, their registrations cannot be challenged. For example, if I know you, you are not a Ghanaian, but you've acquired the Ghana card indicating you are a citizen of Ghana, and I see you in the queue, I will challenge your registration. So the, the question is, why is the EC in a rush with its counterparts to use the Ghana card solely as the document of preference? Knowing that people who are Ghanaians, maybe 15 years, they just turned 18, they want to get on the system, but they've been traveling with their parents abroad. They have their passports that are working. Why can't they walk into an EC office and say, I am so so and so, this is my passport that bears my biometric information as a Ghanaian, and I want to register? And we have to deprive them because they simply don't have a Ghana card. Why should that be the case? No, I think, uh, let, let me say that. The Ghana card is acquired at the age of 15. I hope you are aware. The Ghana card is acquired at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. And when we met with our partners, we had a lot of discussion. So we were asking, why are we not using the passport? And there were several responses. One of the key responses that stood out was that we want to be very consistent so that the forms we are using, everything will be very consistent. And we also noticed that the, the universe, universe of Ghanaians who have the passport, I don't think they are even more than 10%. That number is very, very insignificant. Does it, does it really matter if even they are, they are in the minority? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. But what I said was that we want some uniformity across board. But uniformity also, the Constitution is enshrined in the Constitution that the fundamental human rights must be guaranteed regardless of the uniformity the EC seeks. 
Okay, so I've understood you. So what we are basically saying is that we want uniformity across the requirement we are using. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is that, you know, when you, are, when you are talking about fundamental human rights, so assuming you are saying if we don't allow somebody to use their passport, we are, we are, we are infringing upon the person's right, mm -hmm. the question usually the judges are interested in, is there a document which is readily available, which you are telling the people to use, mm -hmm. and the people don't have access to it? Mm -hmm. I know if you follow the procedure used by judges in uh, Ghana elsewhere, so you are saying the passport. We are not disputing against the usage of the passport. But what we are saying is that as a committee, when we met with the parties, the conclusion was that they thought, oh, the Ghana card now, we have over 70 million of our people who have registered. So as I said, the judges will want to find out, is the card available? If it's not available, if what we are saying that oh, people should register, and people are telling us they cannot register, and that can they use their passport? Yeah, we, we perfectly understand. But what we are saying is that this is something which is readily available. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you are, you, you, you are hearing the bank saying that people should come and uh, update their records with the, the Ghana card. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the banks have said we should come and update the records. But what we are saying is that the Ghana card is readily, readily available. And as we speak now, the exercise we are about to undertake the exercise has not started. It probably will start November, December, or January. So what we are saying is that we have enough time for people to acquire. We, we do hear of people who are saying when you apply, some of them, it takes a while before you get it, but there are some who also get it on the same day. Is there not a case in point for the EC to abet its mind too, especially when it comes to the same card registration exercise, which has shown that a lot of Ghanaians don't have access to their cards. Some registered last year still haven't gotten their cards. If you listen to the posture of the uh, CEO for the NIA, they say that it's a continuous process. And so at any point in time that anybody wants to go and register and have their card, the door is yeah, open okay. to them. But if in the interim, let's say EC decides that by November you start your exercise, and I haven't gone through the process of getting my Ghana card. And I walk into your offices and I say, I have my passport. I want to register. Nothing should bar me from registering, regardless of your position of having uniformity. Because it's a form of identification which is not only accepted in Ghana, but worldwide. So why should that deprive me of having myself on your system? No, well, ours is also a continuous exercise. Mm. And what, this is what the EC is saying. Once we begin in November, we are going to do it till probably 2024 elections. And even around the time of the election, we can still be registering. The only thing we cannot do is to register you within 60 days before the elections. Mm. So once we begin, so if you come to us in November, that or you have only your passport, we'll show you that the law says that we are doing this with the Ghana card. So make the effort to acquire your Ghana card. If you get the Ghana card next year in June, next year in June, if you acquire the Ghana card, you should still be able to come to us. So in other words, our exercise is ongoing. Anytime you get the card, come to us. And let me also make this very clear. We are not registering every Ghanaian. We are only registering Ghanaians who turn 18 since the last registration exercise. And we're also registering those who, for one reason or the other, did not register. So when you look at the data, the experts are saying by 2019, about almost 19.9 or so million people will be 18 in Ghana. And currently, the EC has registered a little over 17 million. And you know, in Ghana, voting is not compulsory. So when you look at the figures, almost about 2.7 or so of people, if those numbers are very, very accurate, are expected to be registered to the end of maybe next year or 2024. So clearly, you have a country where voting is not compulsory. And you know, in the past, people who acquired the voter's card for several other factors apart from voting. So what the Electoral Commission is saying is that you look at the Ghana National Identification Authority. National Identification Authority in 2020, around 2020 March, they had done around 6 million, 7 million. And currently, they had done about 17, 17 million. And this 17 million, they've issued a card to about 15.4 or so. So what we are saying is that we have, we have the next two years. And our, our activity has not started. 
So what we are telling everyone is that this is something which is imminent. It will probably will start in about four months, five months. And per our investigation, where the, you know, the Ghana Cardi are operating in all the districts, about 276 centers, 16 regional, averagely where they are operating, based on the information I have, they are doing about 20 per day and giving the cuts, although there are some who are having challenges. So what we are saying is that people should go ahead and get it so that that battle that normally comes during registration where people will challenge that, no, this person you have brought is not a Ghanaian. This person you have brought is not 18 years. And they will be exchanging blows. Remember, you heard in 2020 somebody even died, I think in the Banda area. Yeah. So these are things, a country, we are making progress. Why do, you want, why do we still want to perpetuate something? And so I, I find it difficult to believe that some people are saying others will be disenfranchised. We are not registering all Ghanaians. We are only registering those, and I said Ghana card is acquired at the age of 15. Mm. So if you are 17 now, and you know you turn 18 in January, take the steps. Anytime you get the card, if, let's say you get your card in November, you begin now, you get your card in November. January, you are 18, when you will open, just come to our center so that we avoid all this fracas, all this commotion that takes place at the registration center, and people are saying no to this. We're having a conversation about uh, the EC and uh, the CI that's in Parliament and the steps they intend to take. And uh, the buhaha it's generated in the media space. So, look, we're still on the exercise. So I ask, the process that best the Ghana card, that makes its fidelity 100%, is not in doubt. Mm -hmm. So a birth certificate guaranteed the birth of the Ghana card. A passport guaranteed the birth of a Ghana card. The grantor guaranteed the birth of a, a Ghana card. Why can't they be within the scheme to run parallel to the use of the, uh, what do you call it, the Ghana card, if the EC intends to embark on the continuous registration exercise for new entrants? Let, let me say this, the, the LI. Mm setting up the Ghana card, mm. the ally, the legislative instrument, mm. there's a provision in that document mm. which says that in all matters that require identification, mm. in all matters that require identification, the Ghana card shall be used mm. in all matters that require identification. Mm. So when we do that, we are being consistent with the law. Mm. So we acknowledge that you said, oh, they accept the passport, they accept the voter's card, the birth set, guarantor, and everything. But the law says that for any institution that does anything that requires identification, is the Ghana card that shall be used. Mm. So right from the word go, if we say we are using the Ghana card, then we are just being very respectful of the law. But these uh, discussions have come about because people are saying that many people don't have the Ghana card. Mm. So if you say, oh, they've used the guarantors, no, we don't have any problem with that. Because the law even what, enjoys. What would, the, what would be the problem if people with passports are allowed to use their passports? What would be the problem if people who want to use guarantor system are allowed to use? What, what would be the problem? No, I, Apart I, from I, your I, concern I, about consistency, what would be the no, issue? No, we think for the for the for the work we do, mm. when you have consistency in consistency in terms of the required documents you use, it helps. Because mm. you are not only going to register people; you need some forms. To be mm. used and you need to enter the data in a particular way mm. so if it is possible that you can have this uniformity or consistency across board it helps the work we do but, 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 but beyond that the mm. reason why i'm not we, we we've not said the passport is not good mm. we've not said that but what we are saying is that if this card is not readily available we understand because in the last registration we use uh, the passport mm. we in the last we use so, the passport so are we saying so, are we saying that if I walked to, when you start to exercise and I walked with my passport, I will be disallowed? No, we'll tell you that the law, they, they, no, they, you know, when you look at Article 51 of the Constitution, mm. Article 51 of the Constitution says that when the EC is performing its functions, it will come up with a constitutional instrument yeah. that will guide in the registration of voters, mm. that will guide in the exhibition, voting by proxy, etc. So once we are able to put a law together which says that passport is not part, you have no business. Is that, is that in other words, when you come to the registration center mm. to say because you have passport, you should be registered, 
you are just coming to create problems. Well, there is a law. Yes. And, and, and I and hope you know once the law says this is what man. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. But is that not a recipe for chaos? For us, seeing how Parliament itself has been over the period, it's a hung Parliament. The minority already are raising concerns about this year that is before them. Is that not a recipe for chaos? Is it not a recipe for a delay in terms of your plans and actions? No, clearly we, we don't if see the minority it, we decide don't see that not way. to go with. But this is not something. This is not one of those things where Parliament must vote. Is a simple majority mm. like 51, 50, 49? No, that's it's not one of those things. And. Clearly, when you have, if you have a copy of your constitution, it specifies this, this what the EC should be able to introduce a constitutional instrument. And there are procedures. You look at our constitution, Article 11, it talks about the constitutional instrument, the procedure to ensure that it doesn't pass in parliament or it passes. In, all these things are there. So this is not one of those things where parliament will say uh, NDC, this number, all NDC is against, all MPP is for all MPP. No, it's not one of those. So we are very confident. And we think this is something which will deepen the integrity of our political process. It's interesting that you're embarking on this project and the major opposition political party, the NDC, is not part of it. Are you not concerned? In terms of concern, maybe if you say concern, initially yes, somebody was asking about, well, no, we are not worried. In terms of concern, we are because we think this is something which is good for our democracy. Mm. We need all the parties to be on board. And we also recognize that in a democracy, hardly are you going to find all the players agreeing. But clearly, you know, the Constitution has given function to several mm. institutions. The EC has specific functions laid out in the Constitution. You read Article 45, 46, 47, up to 51, the things the EC is able to do. Mm. All those things are indicated in the Constitution. And I know the political parties, too, they have their laws with govern what they are able to do. So mm. we don't hear that, oh, political party thinks that this is what they want to do. Then the EC says no. So so do we expect that if what the EC is doing is consistent with the law, if clearly the EC is undertaking an action which will disenfranchise, but clearly, with the evidence I've painted, I know if we give it to neutrals to look at it, they will see clearly that the EC is not going to disenfranchise anyone. And so, we so, think so. that the chaos that occurs at our registration centers, because people are not Ghanaian, they are being challenged, and some of the places it leads to fighting, people are not 18, and we have the evidence. Our people give us them for regularly, where political parties, clearly people who are 13, 14. I don't know if, as a media, you are interested in having people who are 14, 15 on our register of voters. So those it's, are the things. We, it's a mischief. We don't only want to kill. We want to kill that particular mischief. It would obviously be a concern to us as the media. Yeah. Uh, so uh, are you saying that uh, an individual who is held the fort as an EC chairperson over a period, he's suggesting to you, and I'm talking about Dr. Farijan, that be careful and tread cautiously with this move of the usage of the Ghana card as the sole document. You should hes hesitate or you should hasten slowly. You're not taking that advice? No, but, but what did he actually? I thought he said it, it can disenfranchise. Yes, it can disenfranchise. So when you say it can disenfranchise, what does it mean? Some people may not get onto your system. Some people may not. Because, so like I'm saying, if it becomes law that if you don't have the Ghana card, you can't register to be on our systems. That person cannot be on your so, system. So are you, are you, that person so may have legitimately to be, a passport to be, that qualifies him to be on the system. To be on the system. So are you saying uh, within two years people cannot get the card? Is it's that been, what you are saying? It's been, we went for the elections in 2020. 2020. From 2020, 2019, the NIA had started the process of registration to date. The NA has not been able to register organized. People have registered since 2020, and they haven't gotten their cards. So that alone should inform the EC. There's a challenge. I'm sure the National Communications Authority and the Ministry of uh, Communications, when they started their process, at the back of their minds, they thought the NIA would be able to speedily register. But here is the case. That's not been the case. So should that not form a basis for you to hasten slowly? OK, let me, let me put it this way again. Mm. Uh, let me repeat. The EC already has 17 million people, a little over 17 million people registered. Mm. And based on our estimates, about 450,000 to 500,000 people should, be regist uh, should register as voters every year, mm. based on our estimates. We are not registering all Ghanaians, so I've understood the picture you have painted. Mm. The people you are saying they registered for the NIA, maybe 2020, I believe all of them are on our voters' roll. 
For those we already we have already registered, we don't have any problem. They are already they are entered. We are now going to register those who have turned 18, mm. and those who for one reason or the other. And what the commission is saying is that the exercise has not started. Mm. So those people, we expect that they should take the steps to acquire the Ghana card. And I believe for these people we are mentioning, mm. a number of them even have the card already. So if you hear us beginning the exercise, and you mention a point, let's say we are in 2024, mm. and it's very clear that let's say in 2024, for some strange reason, the NIA cannot operate again. You know, some people will turn 18 in 2024, up to August yeah. or maybe September when we will close registration ahead of the 2024 election. Mm. If there is something like that should happen, mm. the EC is, is there for Ghanaians. Mm. I don't think Ghanaians are there for the EC. Mm. The EC is rather there for Ghanaians. Mm. If we get to that point where the NIA cannot operate mm. for some strange reason, let's say their systems are all down, the EC will make changes to the law. Because mm. we are required by law mm. to register anyone who is 18. But what I'm saying now, currently, based on the information available to us, NIA 2020 around March, they have done about 7 million. Mm. 2022, two years, three months or so, four months, they've done 10 million. So are you saying that an institution that has registered 10 million people in two years, and the machines they use to register, those machines are still there? Let me give and you are saying in two years they let, cannot let register you, let me give you, two million people. Let me give you a typical example. So by the 28th, 25th of last month, mm. virtually all the telcos had their offices choked. choked. People wanted to get on the system because they didn't want to lose their SIM cards. When the announcement of an extension came, they all vanished. Mm -hmm. If this continues for the period into the end of September, where people are not there, we're going to have a situation whereby around 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th of September, the numbers are going to swell again. So, so what does it tell you about so the So what it tells you is that, yes, what it tells you is that that possibility, as much as the systems may be in place, may be delayed as a result of the recalcitrant nature of certain individuals. But, but which, so in other words, you are supporting my position? No, I'm not supporting. I'm, I'm saying that there's a possibility for a delay because of the nature of certain individuals. Let, let me make this point. Mm. The, the right to vote mm. is a fundamental right. Indeed. So fundamental. Mm. And, and uh, I remember I used to teach human rights at the university, and I would, t I would tell them, the right to vote is a political and a civil right. Mm. And those ones, those are rights that are given to you. Nobody can take it away from, from you. you. But we also recognize that on the ground, some of the rights requires you as an individual to take some action. Mm. That's why we said the Constitution hasn't given us any way to identify that you are 18. Mm. So over the years, various laws have been uh, passed to say, OK, to say somebody is 18, the person must provide uh, a passport, must provide a Ghana card. Mm. To say somebody is a Ghanaian, the person must have an identity showing that A, B, C, and D. So if you want to excite the right to vote, assuming you have younger siblings or children who are 16, 17 years, mm. who will be turning 18 in tw uh, November 2023, I expect that you encourage them to take the steps to get the Ghana card now. Mm. In other words, to say you are voting, the right to vote on the ground is not automatic. That's why we have a registration procedure. Mm. If you as an individual must not do anything, then we'll just be sitting there. Then when it's time for voting, because you are 18, just go there. How about, how about the person who is supposed to allow me to vote is putting an impediment in my way? The person is no, nobody is putting an impediment. I, 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 I am a traveled individual from, from a young age. I have my passport. And we are saying that the and guy... I want, to, I want to go to the center and, and, register, use, and register. And the person who is there says, I have gone to put a law that inhibits you from using your passport. No, the, the law doesn't inhibit you. The law says that to register, uh -huh. to take part in this process, you need the, the yes, card issue. An inhibition. By, no, it's not an inhibition. Because if, but if, for if, your law, but for your law, I would have been holding a legitimate document of Id identification. It is your law that is barring me from utilizing no, that the document. Law, the law is saying that for us to be able to achieve 
that collective objective of promoting our democracy. Which is uni uni uniformity which you seek. No, integrity of our process. Mm. Let's use this. And the question you must, that's why I, I was making the point, you are the course you want to find out. This card, the EC is saying that the people should acquire. Is it something which is readily available? Mm -hmm. If it's not, if it's not, then the court will say, don't forget that in 2020, the EC went to court. Mm. And the EC said in 2020, we said we were not going to allow people to use their old voter's card to come and register. You remember? Yeah. The, 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 court, the ruling of the court, did you get a chance to read it? Yes, we did. I remember. I, I'm even writing something I've quoted. Mm. The, the judge said, oh, if even you think there is a right way to do it, you as an individual or you as an institution, you think the right to, there is a right way or a better way, mm. not even the right, there is a better way to do it than what the EC is doing. It doesn't mean that you can impose that on the EC. And let's be very clear, even outside the uh, realm of legalities, mm. I don't know, you are hearing people are registering their same, are, are they doing it with passport? Those who are abroad and they come to Ghana, with their, are, they, are they updating their same records with their passport? Oh, some are, some are, some are um, updating their system, their same cards and all that. No, but they are doing with the Ghana the card. card yes. But they are not doing with the passport. True. Are they being inhibited? Because of the law. So, 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 because so, of the law. So how is that different from the EC? No, and the EC, is not, the EC is not doing it, let's say, in the, only the month of November. Mm. When we start in November, it's going to continue till around maybe October, October. 7 for October 6, before the 2020 elections. That's what is, is the passport a good document for identification? Let me ask you. We, no, I've, I've, I've made the point clear that we is, don't have any it? problem with the passport. So why not include it in your CI that is going to Parliament? No, we, we've had that extensively. Mm. And we have come to the conclusion with our partners that we think that there are many Ghanaians who have the Ghana card. Not many have the passport. And besides, we are promoting a particular system where there will be consistency across board. But you know many people register with their passport. I personally, I registered with my passport in 2020. So we are not saying there's a problem, but what we are saying is that this card is readily available. If for some, that's why I say, if for some reason, people can no longer get the card, we don't have any problem, we'll make changes. If for some reason, come you, let's say 2024 January, March, then it's clear, oh, Ghana card, national education, their systems have shut down. They can no longer register. They can no longer issue cards. Who we'll open up? I, I, I'm, 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 I, I doubt there's going to be a force majeure that is going to get the NIA. Also, that means you think the NIA will be working. NIA, yes, of course, obviously. I understand. So what's the problem the, now? I doubt there's going to be a force majeure that is <laughs> that going to get there's the no problem. NIA not to be working. That, you are, uh, uh, that means you have been supporting our position, <laughs> but you just don't. He's still live on Happy 98.9 FM ETV Ghana, live on Nisim 95.9 and 100.1 Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And uh, we have having... Uh, conversation with elder Dr. Bosman Asari. Now, look, the EC and the NDC have a frosty relationship, true or false? It's false. Really? It's false. It's false. The reason why I say it's false is that the EC has a mandate, and that mandate is clearly specified mm. in Article 45 of our Constitution. We are supposed to work with all the political parties. We are supposed to expand uh, the registration of voters. We are supposed to do a lot of things, demarcation of electoral boundaries. We are supposed to organize and conduct elections. And we are even supposed to supervise the elections of the political party executives, their constituency, uh, their regional and national executives. Mm. And we have been doing for the NDC uh, since uh, time immemorial. And I know very soon the NDC will be doing uh, their, cons you know, the MPP just did their mm. uh, election. The NDC will be doing, by law, they are supposed to alert the Electoral Commission for us to go and supervise and do it for them. So we are ready to go and do it. So as you rightly point out, maybe the question will apply to them. They will say, oh, it's true. They have a problem with the EC. But if you ask me what is the problem, after the 2020 elections, we went to court and they say, oh, because since then they have boycotted. Mm. So at times people can have issues with you and you don't know. So we don't think there is any problem with that. And so we are ready to uh, supervise the NDC election. For them. When last did you have a conversation with any top executive member of the NDC? No, we as, don't, as EC chair? We don't have, I'm, uh, I'm the EC deputy, deputy my chair yeah. there. Yeah. We, don't have, we don't have conversations with any of the party executives. We always see any time the parties have any concerns and they want to see us, apart from meeting them at the 
IPAC. Mm. No, I mentioned that very soon they will be having their constituency. They will come and engage because we have to direct our, they cannot directly engage our district officers, our regional officers to organize elections for them without mm. recourse to the, uh, the chairperson. So they will write to the chairperson that they want to do A, B, C, and D, and we are going to instruct our people to assist them. So as far as I'm concerned, we don't have any problem, and we don't intend. By the, main, by the nature of our setup, mm -hmm. uh, I, I normally use this scripture in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, follow peace with all men. By the nature of our work, we cannot, if even people have problems with that, we cannot, because we are, we are prohibited from having problems with any party. You, you keep mentioning IPAC meeting, IPAC meeting. These representatives of political parties that come for these IPAC meetings, can we call them legal entities for the EC to engage them per the Constitution's requirement of you as EC? Can well, we call them? They are, they are legal entities. So they submit their audited accounts? No, they uh, do. They do. I know recently we did uh, uh, visitations of their offices. Mm. The committee has done a report. They've submitted it to the commission. The commission will look at it and come up with its findings and decisions. Those who did not meet the requirements, the commission will look at it and take the necessary action. But mm. be, before this exercise, I will say all of them, they, they've been complying with the rules. So mm. the report is with the commission. We expect the commission will look at it and the commission will come out with its decisions if what must happen to some clearly, the, but they are law-abiding. Let me put it to you, Doc, that the ultimate goal of the Electoral Commission is that of ensuring that in the 2024 elections, the Ghana card becomes the ultimate document for identification in the election. When Is you that your goal? No, when you say the ultimate goal, I think the ultimate goal is what I will put it is that to be able to organize a very effective, efficient elections in 20, not only 2024. Next year we have district assembly elections. Oh, no. I'm looking at the bigger one. The yeah, main I, think, I think that one is even the more, uh, I personally think it's the most important election. Really? Except that many Ghanaians don't, be don't see that because maybe the parties are not. Well, that's the, that's the, the election that will ensure our electoral areas area, yeah. have representatives. And you are looking at in Ghana, we have about over 6,000 electoral areas, almost mm. 6,200 or so. And we are going to use that to elect these people who are in charge of development in our various Within the district, you can have about maybe 10 electoral areas. And if we are able to get this particular uh, democratic uh, process process right, look at the development in our various communities. So I think this is the most important. Well, let me, let me rephrase. Uh -huh. Let me rephrase. So the ultimate goal is to have the national elections to elect a president and members of parliament use the Ghana card as the sole document for that election. True or false? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me see if I can understand your question well. Mm -hmm. What the Electoral Commission is saying is that we want to promote, promote the integrity of our process. Mm. We've come a very long way as mm. a country. We've made a lot of significant strikes. And if you have been following the Electoral Commission, after every election we try to do things anew just to be able to enhance the credibility, the integrity of our process. Mm. Now don't forget, this is a country that is a beacon. That is a reference point when it comes to democratic politics and democratic elections. Mm. Many countries look up to us. So because of that, we are always very careful the things we do. And let, take it from me, we are not going to do anything to disenfranchise anyone. If we get to a point and we realize that some people will be disenfranchised, we'll look at our process. But what we are saying is that now, with the progress we have made, mm. with the registration of Ghanaians by the National Identification Authority, we are, we are very much convinced that if we do that, the people, this year, if we should look at the number, we are looking at almost about 900,000 people who should mm. have registered from last year to this year. If we, we go that route, it will strengthen our system so that political parties, the infightings and the fightings that occur at our police registration centers, where clearly people who are not 18 are being cajoled are being compelled by others to go and register because they are ignorant. They don't understand the consequences. Mm. Now, when you tell those same people, go and get the Ghana card and they are 15, they know when you come to our center to come and register and the Ghana card says you are 15, you will not even come. Doc, you haven't answered my question. I said, true or false, is that the ultimate intent? What's the question again? That the ultimate intent is to use the Ghana card for the 2024 
presidential and parliamentary elections. No, it's not. The, it's false. It's false. It's false. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised it's false because you talk about uniformity. And so if we are going into a 2024 election and we are looking for uniformity, and Ghana, the NIA has been able to register over 80 million people, and these are people who have the cards, what stops the Electoral Commission in seeking that uniformity to use the Ghana card? No, I, I said this for because we have, we have several ultimate objectives. There are several ultimate objectives ahead of the 2024. But I limited, I limited my question no, but in way, terms of people, identification. No, so if you are saying it's one of the ultimate objectives, then I will say true. It's one of so the ultimate... reframe the question and say... So the use one, of of your, one of your ultimate objectives <laughs> yes. is to use the Ghana card for the 2024 yes, elections. That one, that one is true. It's true. One of our ultimate... There are several ultimate objectives, and it happens to be only one of them. Interesting. Now, let's come to issues about you, the Electoral Commission, and your relation with other bodies, especially when it comes to sensitization, getting closer to elections and all of that. How are we ensuring, for instance, you and the NCC and co? Because, for instance, the 2020 elections, there were several concerns that were raised about sensitization when it came to the registration exercise. What kind of moves are being done to ensure that projects that are ahead of you, especially the decentralized system of elections that you're talking about, the district assembly elections, people know what to do and what not to do, since it's just that close? I think as an institution, we've always been collaborating with other sister institutions. Uh, the National Commission for Civic Education is very, very central. You have the National Media Commission, all of them play a critical role, and largely civil society organizations. And we also do work with the, the Information Service Department. Department well, yeah. They have a lot of offices in the various districts, and they have cars that engage in a lot of public education. And we've noticed that the district assembly elections, although I said I believe it's the most important elections, mm. And the patronage has always been very, very low. Voter turnout usually hovers below maybe 50%, I think about 40-something percent. It's one of the things we have to do a lot of work on. So next year, we intend to begin uh, doing a lot of public education on it. Mm. And the media, to the way you, you, you show a lot of interest in presidential, parliamentary, <laughs> you know, you are here, you are asking me only about presidential and parliamentary when there is a very critical... So you have uh, us, there. Uh, no, you, are, you, are, I mean, you have taken a stand. And you know, for us, that work is more difficult than the presidential. You know, the electoral areas are over 6,000. Mm -hmm. So we are going to print ballot for each electoral area. Wow. And apart from that, you are going to print ballots for each unit assembly. You, you brought, in, you brought uh, in a very so important it's, element. It's a very critical a very important us. element which nearly escaped me. Uh, seeing the dire situation we are in, in terms of our economic position, the finances, would you be able to access your funds if you have already made provision and if you have already spoken to the finance ministry and made your budget allocations readily for the, uh, you know, the ministry? But do you think you're going to be resourced enough to embark on... Yeah, we are very sure we are going to be resourced enough because, you know, we've already registered a chunk of the people already. Mm. Our registration is not going to cost so much because we've already... We are going to use our officers on the ground to do the registration. Mm. It's going to be continuous. The only thing we will need will be those who are going to work on the day of the elections. And mm. these people are going to work for only one day. So usually you pay them for only one day. So it's not going to be like the last time, 2020, when we had the registration, we registered for over 30 days and people were giving daily wages of about 100 or so per day. Mm. This time it's going to be only one day of work, except some few people who may be working maybe for a week in a returning officer. So we don't think it's going to be so much money. And looking at even 2024, it's going to be the same. The main component of the budget will likely be maybe uh, the cost of the printing of the ballot papers, which alone should not be so much. So we think that, and the government understands the importance of the district assembly election. So I'm sure, as we speak now, the Ministry of Finance should be putting their house in order, planning and making some, uh, you know, the budget, the money is there, you just have to determine which areas you want to use them. You are limited, but you must determine, I want to spend it on this or on that. So I'm sure everything should be okay. Doc, I thank you for making time you're to welcome, speak to us really this morning. I really appreciate that you have given us the opportunity to explain to the people of Ghana. But what I will say is that you, the media, must also analyze. Mm. Analyze so that when, if this is the truth, 
don't pretend because you are neutral. You, no, being neutral doesn't oh, mean you we, don't... we let the facts bear. Mm -hmm. But the... by letting the facts bear doesn't mean that you must not have an opinion. But we do have uh -huh. our opinions. So we want to also be hearing that. So that you let us know whether what we are going to do will it disenfranchise or... Then, then let me encourage you to listen to the Happy Morning Show. I will, I will. Because uh, mm -hmm. when you listen to the Happy Morning Show, you'd, you'd be excited you did. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do. we invite we'll do. you to monitor us every Thank morning. You. Thank you. It's very, very All important. Right. So, uh, Elder... Dr. <laughs> Bosman Asari has been our guest this morning on the Happy Morning Show. We'll take a short break and when we come back, the conversation continues.